Somewhere on 48th Street, on the south side of Philadelphia, a man named Jimmy argues with his buds as he tries to fix his pickup truck in front of his suburban home. One of their friends, Dave, passes by and offers his advice, which only adds to Jimmy's frustrations. What about the catalytic converter? You see what year this truck is, Dave? It's practically a freaking antique. It doesn't have a catalytic converter. Suddenly, they hear an unfamiliar voice offer another opinion from nowhere. Of course, this just annoys Jimmy some more. But Dave and the other men around the truck look at this newcomer, and all they can do is tell Jimmy that maybe he really should listen to what he just said. It's the fuel line. Great. More help. Um, Jimmy, maybe you ought to... And just what makes you so sure it's the freaking fuel line? Jimmy finally takes his eyes away from his vehicle to see that none other than the Man of Steel is standing in front of them. Trust me, I'm sure. And in what seems like a matter of seconds, the entire neighborhood have swarmed in front of Jimmy's house, each of them excited to catch a glimpse of the world's greatest superhero. Jimmy's just as slack-jawed seeing the big blue Boy Scout in the flesh, and he and his friends watch the Kryptonian, funnily enough, simply walk away after wishing him luck with his truck. Media men rush towards Kal-El, as he tries to peacefully do his best Forrest Gump impression, all the while answering their questions as best he could. Everyone thinks there's something wrong with Superman. After all, why walk when he could simply fly to wherever he wanted to go? One of them, an abrasive reporter, shoves a mic in front of Soup's face and starts accusing him. I'll tell you what's going on, I think you lost your powers. No. I don't think you can fly. I can. For this moment, I simply choose not to. Then I simply choose to call you a liar. I don't lie. The pushy newsman won't let up, so to prove his point, he switches up to the sky with the ruse reporter in tow and lands him safely back moments after. Vindicated, Superman continues his trek, leaving everyone around him with the same question. What's up with Superman? The last son of Krypton continues his hike around the streets of Philadelphia when his wife, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, approaches him. I got your call, but I figured I'd still come out to take a look for myself. You're really going to do this? Yes. For how long? I don't know yet. Maybe until I run out of road. Even Lois, the person closest to Cal, doesn't understand what's on his mind. Concerned, she pries and asks her husband if anything's wrong, to which the Man of Steel reassures her that there isn't. Of course, knowing Clark, Lois lets him go as he continues his journey on foot, while everyone else does their best to get to the bottom of Soup's unusual quest. A couple of hours pass, and Superman has found himself inside a local diner. So, um, what'll you have? Well, that's the problem. I'd like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich, but I may have to go with a small salad. I don't have a lot of cash on me. Never use it much. The waitress tells him that he doesn't have to pay. He is Superman after all. But Clark insists. So, he offers to work for his meal, and he ends up cleaning the diner storage room in exchange for a right old Philly cheesesteak. That evening, Superman comes across a shady neighborhood where a crew of drug dealers harass him. Look, I know what you're here for. Think you gonna scare us? You can't do squat, S. You got to abide by the law same as everybody else. You can't go inside any of our cribs. You can't take anything. You can't force us to move. You can't do jack. The Man of Steel agrees. So, in a clever stroke, Soup simply uses his x-ray vision to locate the dealer stash from inside their houses and burns them with his heat vision. And all the thugs can do is rush into their house to put out the fire. A kid who saw all this talks to Superman and tells him that the hoodlums will just move to a different neighborhood once he's gone, to which the Man of Steel replies, Yes, but they won't be here anymore, and that's a step in the right direction. See, in the end, all we can do is look at where we are, at where we're standing, and say we will not allow this, here. Over there has to stand for itself, has to speak for itself, because it's only when over there becomes here that we can stop this once and for all. And from now on, my eye will be right here. Superman continues his journey well until the following morning. Along the way, he even stops a group of teenagers from running a red light and offers an old man a bit of medical advice. But perhaps one of Superman's greatest feats, yes, even in spite of having defeated literal gods and world-conquering robots before, happens later that day in the middle of the city. Jumper? Yep, Felicity Rose. What happened? From what we can figure, she lost her mom, lost her job, lost everything, and came down here to end it. Don't suppose you'd like to go up there and grab her for us, would you? No, but I'll talk to her. The Man of Steel flies up the building where he sees Felicity sitting on its ledge. Hello, Felicity. I thought we might talk for a bit. I understand you've been going through a lot lately and... Don't you dare touch me! That's what you want, isn't it? 
Wait until I drop my guard and then you grab me and take me back down by force. Because you can. Because you're stronger than me. Because you know I can't stop you. Somebody said when you give your word, you never break it. Is it true? Is it? Yes. Then I want your word. I want your promise. That you won't try to take me down by force. And that if I jump, if I choose to jump because it's my choice, you won't stop me. If you do that, I'll talk to you. Cal knows the conundrum in his hands, but as we'd expect from the world's greatest superhero, he puts his faith in the girl and agrees. I give you my word. I won't stop you. And I won't take you back down against your will. After I buried my mom, I stood there after everybody else had left and I thought, is this it? I mean, is this all there is? Working in a cubicle six days a week until I'm too old to do it anymore. Then I die? Is that it? Is that what we're here for? What's the point? When I graduated high school, I thought, we all thought, we're gonna go off and do great things. We're gonna change the world. Save the world. It's not fair. None of it's fair. And don't you dare tell me it is. Superman might have the power to literally turn back time or carry the world on his back, but let's not forget, at his core, the Man of Steel embodies the best of what humanity has to offer. I won't, because you're right, it's not fair. John Lennon is dead and Muammar Gaddafi is still alive. JFK is dead and Castro is still alive. Gandhi is dead but Manson keeps hanging in there. It's not fair, but it's not unfair either. It just is. That's it? That's the best you can do? It's neither fair nor unfair, it just is, because that's the truth. All I know is that we have to try, that's what life is. We try, we push back against the darkness, just a little. Felicity's exhausted, she tells Kal-El that she just wants to rest a bit, and Superman, being the true hero that he is, offers to stay with the girl right there. Daytime gives way to dusk, and dusk makes way for the night. I don't know, I feel like I don't know anything anymore, I don't know what to do. Can I make a suggestion? If you honestly believe, in your heart of hearts, that you will never, ever have another happy day, then step out into the air. I'll keep my promise. I won't stop you. But if you think there's a chance, no matter how small, that there might be just one more happy day out there, then take my hand. Hearing this, Felicity Rose takes one step off the ledge, and into the arms of Superman. And if that doesn't encapsulate what the last sin of Krypton is all about, we don't know what will. Now, if you're wondering what set Supes on his little grounded adventure around Philadelphia, then allow the Man of Steel to tell it himself. To be a hero, and I'm not saying I am one, I'm just saying, is to live your life in a small cell whose bars are the principles and rules that define what you will and won't accept. Injustice, cruelty, murder. If I'm lucky enough, privileged enough to live in that cell, to serve in that box with the word hero written on it, then I say to you, from somewhere deep inside that box, what are you doing out there? And with that, Superman takes another step towards his journey around this blue marble that he calls home. How did you find that Superman story? Got other superhero tales that you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments section. And for more heartwarming pop culture content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications to be the first to see what we have in store for you. We'll catch you next time, only here at KRTV Marvel.